Welcome back, everybody. WQAM, Brendan Tobin here with you, Tobin and Leroy. Very excited to talk to our next guest. BKFC is coming back to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, the Guitar Hotel, and one of South Florida's own. Maybe the best to ever do it inside the squared circle. Luis Baboon Palomino, he is going to be taking on Austin, no doubt, Trout, in a big-time matchup. Luis, thanks for doing this, man. Really appreciate your time. Anytime, man. Thank you for having me. This uh this match, I know you've been clamoring for a big time matchup, man. You're maybe the best one to do it ever in this promotion. Does a matchup against a guy like Austin Trout, a former boxing champion, has been in there with the likes of Canelo, Miguel Cotto, is this in the ballpark of where you are? Are you satisfied with the with the stakes of a matchup like this? It's definitely in the ballpark. It's not it's not ultimately what I'm looking for, but it's definitely in the ballpark. It is a big name, it's a name that's known around the world. He's done great things in boxing, you know, as the names that you mentioned, and being a former two-time WBA world champion is a hell of a head for the collection. So what do you think it is, Luis, when you get in there with these guys? I mean, you've mastered bare-knuckle fighting to, I think, a level that has not been seen for, for a renewed sport. What do you think is the thing that people don't realize when they get in there with you that you have just you've you've gotten that sweet science down in a better way than the MMA guys or the boxing guys who come on over? Man, I think it's a combination of of the way that I grew up, you know, the the roots and, and of my upbringing to begin with, and and the fact that I did come into professional fighting, right? I did I did have my run in MMA. I, I ended up collecting four titles. Even though they were not in the most biggest shows in the world, it wasn't UFC, it wasn't Bellator. You know, it, I did collect four titles in four different organizations in two different weight classes. There's a lot of discipline and sacrifice that goes to that. I did box people with four ounce gloves, and before all that began, I already had tooth marks in every single knuckle, and that's due to my upbringing. You know, the, all the fighting in in Dade County here in Miami, Florida. You know, I started out boxing when I was 10 or 13 years old, but I only did that for three years. You know, and then. My father goes to prison, and I ended up fighting a lot in the streets. So it, it, it was like I did the bare knuckle boxing in the street. Then I did MMA. I went professional. And then bare knuckle boxing surfaces in which I become, you know, what you might say, the emperor of bare knuckle boxing, right, where I've mastered this division. I've mastered the way of the art of fighting without gloves. And I mean, you had experience with it growing up, but, like, as far as BKFC and it, and it'll come along – have you surprised yourself in any way about how good you are at this? Because I always tell people, if you haven't watched BKFC, like experience matters. Like you can't just come on over here and think like, oh, this guy was a great guy in UFC and he's going to take it over just like that. You know, I always will lean a guy who has had time. So when you came over, like, were you surprised at like how well you adjusted to it? Did you take to it even more than better than you thought you would? Um, I guess how much how much more technique there was to it. Just kind of break it down as far as just the science of the sport of 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 BKFC. Well, you're absolutely right, man. Look, we we saw you know Luke Rockhold, former UFC champion. We saw you know Eddie Alvarez, former UFC and Bellator champion, come in and you know didn't look as great as you would have thought they would have, right? So to answer the question, man, is this? I definitely surprised myself. As I moved along, when I first came in, I said, this is it for me. Because in MMA, I was that striker that people didn't want to deal with. I was a striker that people wanted to take me down, hold me down. And they didn't even want to ground and pound on me. Because then I would have the chance to get back up on my feet. And then they had to deal with hell. You know? So when I came into it, I said, man, I'm going to be good at this. I'm going to be undefeated. I said it in my head. And then there's a point in time where you, you have to stay humble at the same time, right? So I didn't, I didn't in, imagine that far as far as I've gotten today. So, yes, to, to to answer your question, I did end up surprising myself as I went along how good I really became at this game. I mean, like, it's something that I was definitely born for, and and I proved it, you know, back to back. How uh, how long do you think you want to go, Luis? Like, do you do you picture – do you have a, a, a number of fights left in mind? Because you obviously don't look like – it's still dangerous because obviously you can get cut and all this. It is fighting – but you don't feel like you're slowing down. You almost feel like you probably have some rejuvenation in yourself because of how great you've been at this. So do you have a, a timeline in mind of how much longer you want to do this? Uh, it's an interesting question, man. I, I, most people ask me that because people are, are very fixed on, on age. And, you know, what I got to say to most people is we all age differently. You know what I mean? Like we don't have any control of when we die. 
We have no idea of that. But we definitely have control of how we age. And I've proven that at 43 years old, I'm only getting younger. You know what I mean? So um, me, at first, I was thinking 10 and 0, 45 years old. You know, I wouldn't fight no more. No more than past that. And 10 and 0 is going to be here February 2nd. <laughs> and then la just last year, they were asking me how much more. And I was like, I'm taking it one year at a time. To answer your question, man, to be honest with you, at the bare minimum, I probably will not stop fighting until I'm 45 uh, years young. And I want to do more fighting uh, if possible. I want to, with the, I've always said this, with the blessing of BKFC, I want to get into glove boxing before it's all said and done because that was my first love. And even uh, Karate Combat has uh, mentioned something about collaborating with BKFC. So if, if the organization's, um, has the blessings on me and I can do that, then I'd, I'd love to do that too. But mainly, more than anything, glove boxing. And, and I'm just looking for big fights, man. You know, I, I think that I've earned the moment to to start now, cashing out on all my sacrifice, all my years of hard work. And we're here now and I'm not going to go away. <laughs> so 45 at bare minimum. <laughs> do you have a, a boxing one that would be a dream matchup? Like what would be the guy, the if, if you had your way, like a certain boxer that you've had your your eye on if you if you did get that blessing? Oh, I have a few, man. People would just think I'm crazy. You know, I have a lot of haters, of course. If you're not doing something right, you know, if you're doing something wrong, you're not getting haters. So I have a lot of haters that would look at me and think, oh, this guy's crazy. You know, but look, man, it, it, the question is, is is very simple. Do I have a box? Yes, I would love to fight Canelo. You know, now, will I fight Canelo? Will he fight me? I don't think so, you know, but I believe that, you know, something can happen on the line. Now, to be more realistic, I think your Dennis Ugas would be a good name. I don't think that he's too far of a reach for me to fight. You know, your Dennis Ukas or even one of the Charlo brothers, um, definitely. You know, and 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 that tells you, look, I'm, I'm going to fight right now um, this man that, you know, is a former WBA world champion. He's faced, you know, the Charlo brothers. He's faced Canelo. He's faced um, and knocked out Miguel Cotto. You know, like, so if, if, if I go now and I show you what I'm going to do with this man, which I'm going to finish this dude before, before the end of the second round. I show you guys that I can what I can do with this guy. That should put me in the map, you know, in glove boxing because he still is ranked in glove boxing. It's not like he's, he hasn't been active. You know what I mean, I think he's like number five or number six. For for you, Luis, what does it mean to you to get these opportunities in front of South Florida? You know, it's got such a long lineage of great fighters. You you've been there amongst them, but to get these opportunities in front of your hometown crowds, what 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 did, does it like? Does it give you the goosey still? Like, does it does it get old for you or? You know, like, does it still, like, do you still get nervous in front of a hometown crowd? What does that mean for you? No, I definitely don't get nervous, man. And, and, and to be very honest with you, I never have. If, if if I did, it was probably my first fight. That was, like, 50 fights back ago, you know what I mean? But, no, for me, and I've always said it, fighting in my hometown is fueling to me. You know, like, I hearing the crowd, you know, hearing the noise, hearing your name being chanted, you know, all my family members, my friends, my fans, that show up for me every single time. Look, this this event is sold out, man. You know, I've proved time and time, you know, in the beginning when BKC first came out, we first started hitting the Hard Rock. They were, you know, in the Hard Rock Live, they were bringing in the names like Chad Mendes, Mike Perry. You know, I'm in there, right? And I was still the main event because I'm the pound for pound, right? But you're bringing in these names that are known worldwide. That if you see the, if you see the following, they have, you know, way more following than I have, right? Because they've been in UFC and whatnot. But um, right now, this is going to be the second time that I get to show the organization and, and, and the fans out there that I'm the main event that's setting this place out. I'm, is, I'm the biggest name on the card. There is no more Chad Mendes. There is no more Mike Perry in my card. They don't need those big names to sell out a crowd. This event is sold out. <laughs> you know, if it hasn't sold out completely yet, it will be. When we last spoke, you did, you know, we were talking a lot about those those big time matches within the promotion. What are those conversations like with Dave Feldman? I mean, like, he is always a guy that seems like he wants to put on the big fights, but, like, do you feel like there's any, I guess, apprehension from him because you're so good at this that he doesn't want the so-called former, you know, names from UFC coming in and getting schooled <laughs> by you? Like, I, I, it's almost like a double-edged sword. Like, you're so great at his sport, but he brings in all these outsiders and he doesn't want to put them with you because you can make them look bad, Luis. So, like, what are those conversations like with Dave to, to get – you know, a Mike Perry or whomever the next guy is that he brings in from UFC. And I, I think, you know, you got to protect your investment, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
Look, I understand Dave Feldman and, and Nathan Shook, the matchmaker, on, on their look of running their business. Nobody's going to tell them how to do it. They're doing great. Um, and I understand I'm bringing these big names with the big followings. And, and I think that we've done that enough. I think that it's time to now build your champions. We have me. We have Christine Ferreira. You have the juggernaut. You know, then all, all, all we need is an opportunity to beat up one of these so-called big names because they are big names. They are huge people in, you know, and, and much respects to them and all their accomplishments, you know, but this is not MMA. This is not glove boxing. This is bare knuckle boxing. I'm the emperor here and it's time to feed me. You know what I mean? When, when, to answer your question, when it came to fighting Chad Mendes, Chad Mendes literally just did not want to face me. He did not want to fight me, period. I asked Dave back to back. Chad Mendes even took off in a hiatus for a year, came back to fight Eddie Alvarez. Now, as what you're saying, you know, Eddie Alvarez gets signed and they give him Mike Perry. Now, Mike Perry is a bigger guy. He shouldn't have gotten that fight. That should have been my fight, my weight class, but I didn't get it for you already know what reason. You know, I, I'm going to run over these guys. You know, Mike Perry might be strong, tough as nail, um, a very hard, Bare knuckle boxer, yes, wild dog, but he's not as good as me. Nowhere near. So, you know, Eddie Alvarez will have a better shot at beating the bigger guy than beating a guy in his own weight class. And I think that, yes, there was a somewhat leniency towards who they're going to face for the guy, you know. And, you know, it, it, how, how does it look if Eddie Alvarez loses to me compared to he losing to a bigger guy? You know what I mean? And if you saw that fight, Eddie Alvarez won almost every second of that fight until Perry hurt him. Because, like I said, I, I called it. I said, the dog in Perry is going to take out the better boxer in Eddie Alvarez. And that's what happened. And now I've been aiming at, at uh, Perry for the last two years, except for this time I started doing it publicly in their last fight when he faced Eddie Alvarez. And after the fight, I asked him, you know, hey, uh, you know, you called out all these names that are not in the organization. Let's stay over here inside of the promotion. And what about Palomino has been calling you out? And after earning the uh, King of Violence belt, he didn't have a very violent answer. His answer was more like, uh, hey, you know, if whoever the company puts in front of me, I think has to have a certain amount of following on social media and comments and likes and whatnot. And I posted that video on my social media, man. He got crucified for that. And look, man, I like Perry. I have much respect for Perry. I don't think that he's scared of me. You know what I mean? I'm the smaller guy here by a long shot. He walks around 220 pounds. I walk around 170 pounds. I'm the smaller guy here, you know. I, I I'll give him the benefit of a doubt that he was being misguided by his management, who we don't see eye to eye. And I think that his management was the ones that told him to say stuff like that because it, he sounded just out of character. It sounded it didn't sound like him, like himself. You know what I mean? So, um, the last time that I spoke to Feldman, he's the man of his word, and this is what he told me. Feldman said. You do what you do in this fight, February 2nd, meaning do a show, get the win, and I'll do what I do, meaning I'll put the fight together because I told him I want Perry after this fight. So uh, I'm putting all my eggs in that basket. I'm winning this fight aggressively. I'm winning this fight with a fashion, and I know that I can count on David Fabulous order. Luis Baboon Palomino, this man has been reigning as champion for BKFC four years running now. You guys can go watch him against Austin, no doubt, Trout at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Hard Rock Live. It's going to be a hell of a show. If you guys have never been to BKFC, it's a really, 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 really fun time. It's a great event. These guys always bring the action, and this man, probably the best to do it. Luis, we appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much, and I do hope that you get this win and get those big-time fights, man. Thank you.